hiking up a road that will take us to Loaf Mountain. Joining us is Grant Myers whom we met on the internet. That's Loaf Mountain on our left. Don't get your back up now. This trail takes us to a coal. From there we'll be able to easily ascend the east ridge to the summit. At the coal we can see our way clear to the false summit on our left. We don't expect any difficulties, mostly it's a hike to the top. This part is a steep climb and looking back I can see the coal that we left just a few minutes ago. Unfortunately the weather isn't cooperating. Hazy conditions and low clouds obscure the views of surrounding peaks. But the weather was much worse three years ago when Dinah and I, along with Andrew Noguera and Linda Breton, attempted Loaf Mountain in terrible conditions. It rained the entire trip. Yeah, that's right. Snow, poor planning, and especially near zero visibility forced us to turn back. Today we'll have no problem bagging Loaf Mountain. We're already on our way to the false summit, and beyond that, the true summit is minutes away. After we scramble up the false summit, it's a walk to the true summit. But our trip isn't over yet. We go on to climb Spiankop Ridge. We'll follow the ridge that connects the two mountains. Our solitude is broken by this helicopter that flies directly overhead. We've reached the final section of the ridge that connects Spiankop Ridge to Loaf Mountain. We were expecting to hike up Spiankop Ridge, but a close look shows that this won't be the case. It's a steep climb and cliff bands may present some problems. But until we actually start climbing, we won't know how difficult it'll be. I want 10% of the road. Okay. At first it's easy, but we'll soon encounter some difficulties. Dinah is last in line as we scramble up the ridge. The scrambling isn't difficult, but we have to be careful because of the exposure. But nothing prevents us from making it to the summit safely. 